through some of the fundamental concepts. We discussed what is the logic behind giving deductions to the taxpayer when government wants more and more tax to run the economy. So what is the rationality behind allowing deductions? And then we also went through the overview of uh, chapter 4A, which includes section ATC to ATU. And these are the sections in which the income tax department allows various deductions for the taxpayer. And these uh, deductions, ATC to ATU, are broadly categorized into five segments, as you can see here. There are certain set of sections which are designed, which are framed to promote investments and social security. Certain sections which are framed to provide some relief to the taxpayer in terms of meeting certain expenses. The third set of uh, deductions here, these sections are designed to provide relief to the taxpayer to accommodate the health and medical expenditure. And then you also have certain deductions which promotes socially desirable activities. And then you have the final category which allows deduction for royalty on intellectual property. So we were uh, discussing about uh, section uh, ATC. Uh, section ATCCG is no longer applicable for your batch, so I'll just remove it from here. So we will discuss the rest of the sections in today's class, ATTTA, ATCCC, ATCCD, and if time permits, we'll also uh, do an illustration. So ATC is something which we have already gone through. So ATC provides deduction from gross total income. So ATC further has three broader areas. One is the investment. So these are the avenues of investment where the SSC has to invest to claim deductions under section ATC. Then you also have insurance and, and here when you say insurance, uh, we are referring to life insurance premium paid on the policy of self, spouse and children. And the deduction is calculated by applying these two steps, actual premium paid or 10% of the sum assured, whichever is less. Sum assured will be taken as 20% if the policy is purchased uh, or if the policy is issued before uh, April 2012. Uh, then you also have expenditures, which includes home loan, principal repayment, expenses on property registration, tuition fee paid to educate two children. Then we also have Section ADCCC. Section ADCCC talks about pension fund. Now, in most cases, what we see is the corporate sector, especially the private corporate sector, does not provide insurance, uh, sorry, pension, unlike your government jobs, which lays emphasis on payment of pension, uh, private sector by and large, uh, the employers do not provide pensions as such. But it does not mean that you should uh, neglect, you should give at most importance uh, to your retirement planning also, because uh, when you retire, unfortunately, you will not have your own source of income, so you will have a lack of social security because to take care of financial needs, you have to be dependent on your family members. So one of the important principles of uh, financial planning uh, is to ensure that the moment you start working, the moment you start earning, you should have a long term vision and you should ensure that you are protected after your retirement. So retirement planning is a must uh, for all the people, for all the students like you. It's important that you make a note of this because the moment you start earning, you should also think of your retirement because after you retire, you should have some sort of fund that would help you to live rest of your life. So since most of the private sectors do not give any pension, uh, so it does not mean that you should become compensated about it. You can have your own pension fund. Sometimes this is also sold by the financial services companies as 
retirement funds. So what happens in this pension funds or retirement funds? You should create an account for yourself with any of the pension fund companies that offer these retirement plans, whether it is ICICI, Prudential, HDFC Life, uh, Bidla Sun Life, SBI, so many financial services companies offer retirement uh, pension schemes. So what happens here is you should contribute for your own pension fund. So every month, depending on your flexibility, you can contribute certain amount every month, once in six years, once in a year, depending on uh, your convenience. And all that fund gets accumulated under your pension account and the pension fund companies will also give you bonus and certain dividends on the funds accumulated. And once you retire, you can access your retirement funds uh, either in the form of lump sum amount or in the form of regular installments. So this is a pension fund which is uh, created on your own. That means your employee is not contributing here. It is a self created pension fund. So in case if you are investing in uh, pension funds, you are also eligible to claim deduction under section 80 triple C. So 80 triple C is the section that says if you are contributing towards your pension fund, then the amount contributed can be claimed as deduction under section 80 triple C. But eighty triple C also has two sub clauses. You see, you have eighty CC, uh, sorry, eighty CC D and eighty CC D one B. Eighty triple. Now, what you need to understand what's the difference between eighty triple C and eighty CC D. In eighty triple C, uh, what happens is you're creating your own pension fund. Whereas in eighty CC D, what has happened here is there are pension fund schemes which are notified by central government. So these are the pension fund schemes in 80 triple C in which you're contributing for your own pension schemes. And these are the pension schemes which are offered by uh, banks, uh, financial services companies. Whereas 80 CCD is a pension scheme which is notified and under the custody of central government. So this is the pension scheme offered by central government. And the question is to whom? The answer is it is offered to general public also and it is offered to employees also both. So 80 CCD 1A is a pension fund scheme in which. The scheme is jointly offered with the employer. So your company, whether you are a government company or a private company can offer this pension scheme and the money, the amount which is uh, deposited in the pension scheme will be under the custody of central government. So the amount what you're contributing employees contribution towards your pension scheme will be allowed as deduction under section 80 CCD 1A. So remember this is a joint pension scheme in which your employer also is contributing and you are also contributing and the money collected from you and your employer gets deposited in a pension scheme offered by central government. Alternatively, if your employer is not contributing anything and if you want to contribute by yourself, if you want to open an account for yourself, you can also contribute the money self contribution to new uh, to national pension scheme under section 80 CCD 1B. Now the benefit of uh, this national pension scheme and also contribution to Atal Pension Yojana is that you get additional deduction of 150,000. Sorry, additional deduction of 50,000. Now, what it means is that you have to refer this last sentence here. This is important. If you see, it says the maximum deduction allowed, the maximum deduction that can be claimed under section 80C, 80 triple C, and 80 CC D1A, all three put together is 150,000. But 80 CCD 1B offers you an additional deduction of 50,000. So total deduction from all these sections, 80 C, 80 triple C, 80 CCD is 80 CCD 1A is 150,000 plus an additional deduction of 50,000 if you are contributing self contribution towards national pension scheme or Atal pension Yojana. So this will give you an additional deduction of 50,000. So this is about pension. So let me uh, make it a little more clear. 
eighty triple C is a contribution to pension scheme in which you are voluntarily in case in which in which you have voluntarily created a pension scheme account, and this pension scheme account or the retirement plans are offered by institution, financial institutions. It can be a private financial institution. It can be a public financial institution. Does not matter. But these are the uh, pension schemes which are offered by financial institutions to public. So anybody can open this. And the funds are maintained by the respective financial institutions. So, for example, if I am working in Saint Joseph's College, uh, the college does not gives me any pension scheme or retirement plan. But for myself, for my social security, let's assume I have opened a pension scheme with ICICI Prudential, in which I have decided to contribute five thousand every month. That means I am contributing sixty thousand per month, and I have decided to operate this plan for next thirty years. So what will happen is after 30 years, whatever fund is accumulated in my pension scheme, which I have contributed for the last 30 years, I can access it either in the form of uh, installments. That means every month I'll get pension after the term gets over. Or if I want lump sum, I can do it. Or if I want part lump sum, part regular, that also possible, right? So in case if I open this retirement plan or pension scheme under 80 triple C, the in my case, I said I have opened it with uh, ICICI Prudential. So, who manages the fund? Who who keeps the custody of the entire pension fund? The answer is ICICI Prudential. The entire fund is operated by ICICI Prudential. Let's say I don't want a private bank, so I decide to open it with SBI. So, entire fund is managed by SBI because I want you to understand the difference between AT CCD and AT Triple C. In AT CCD, the pension fund schemes are notified and managed by central government. Whereas in AT Triple C, it is managed by financial institutions, because some people will have inhibition. Okay, financial institutions, whether they are safe or not. So let me open direct with government of India itself. I want the pension fund which is under the custody of government of India. So if you are a person who thinks that okay, government of India is much safer than anything else, then you have an option. What is that option? That you can contribute. Right, you can open an account under NPS, National Pension Scheme, which is under the aegis of Government of India, and the fund is also managed by Government of India. And you also have Atal Pension Yojana, so this is also managed by Government of India. <clears throat> and ATCCD one A is a concept wherein your employer also contributes, and you're also contributing from your salary. Okay, so difference between AD Triple C and ATCCD is that. AD Triple C investment in pension fund scheme offered by financial institution to general public, whereas AD CCD these are the pension schemes which are under the custody of government of India. In AD CCD one A, your employer and you will contribute towards the uh, pension fund, whereas in AD CCD one B there is no employer as such. It is independently you are the one who has created this and you are only contributing. So what is the maximum deduction you can claim? ADC, triple C, ADC, CD, one year put together, one lakh fifty thousand, and ADC, CD, one B, which is your national pension scheme and an adult pension yojana, will give you additional reduction of fifty thousand rupees. So this is your pension schemes. Now you also have AT uh, TTA. AT TTA talks about interest on savings bank account. Now whatever interest you have earned from savings bank account. Is also eligible for a deduction to a maximum extent of uh, ten thousand rupees per annum, but the procedure here is slightly tricky. If I earn interest from savings bank account, it is taxable under the head other sources. So first, I have to consider this as an income and show it under the head other sources, and later whatever interest I have earned, I can claim that as a deduction under section eighty TD. So technically speaking, the uh, Interest earned, right, gets kind of an exemption, right? Now let's say uh, I'll just show you here income from let this this let's say this is my income from salary, uh, six lakh rupees, six lakh rupees, and I keep my salary gets deposited in the bank account. So I've also earned interest, interest on saving bank account. What I've earned during the year is uh, seven thousand rupees. Okay, so my gross total income will be six lakh seven thousand. 
Now salary, we have a separate head called income from salary, but interest earned on savings bank account is taxable under the head other sources. Now this is my gross total income. Now what will happen is I can claim deduction. So under section 80, Trust on saving bank account, I can claim as reduction. So how much is the reduction? Maximum reduction is 10,000, but the interest what I have received is only 7,000. So I'm eligible to claim 7,000. So my total income will now be 6 lakh. So point to be noted here is first you should add interest as an income under the head other sources. First show what is the interest what you have earned under the head other sources. Later you claim it as deduction under section ATTT. That's, so that's the procedure what we follow for claiming deduction under section ATTT. So we will do a quick question in which we will learn how to calculate gross total income, how to calculate total income and most importantly, how to calculate tax liability also, because I said I'm combining chapter four and chapter five. So let's do a problem which combines concept from chapter four also and chapter five also. Now, what, what do we have in chapter five? Chapter five, you will learn how to calculate tax, as simple as that. So in order to calculate tax, first you should know what are the rates. That's important. You should know the rates of tax which is applicable for your batch. And let's quickly go through the rates, even though you have learned this in your first chapter briefly uh, in the first semester, in the fifth semester, but by now you would have forgotten. So these are the tax rates which are applicable for the assessment year 2021. So in case of individuals who are non-senior citizen, that means the age is below 60, the tax rates are up to 2,50,000 nil, 2,50 to 5 lakhs, 5%, 5 to 10 lakhs, 20, and about 10 lakhs, 30%. But in case if the SSC is a senior citizen, somebody who is 60 years and above, remember the 60 is also included in this. So 60 years and above, but less than 80 years. So 80 is not included. It should be less than 80. So for senior citizens, this is the tax level. And we also have a third category which is called super senior citizen and super senior citizen is somebody who's 80 years and above. So this is the tax rate for senior citizen. Now, in addition to the tax, SSC has also, SSC should also pay surcharge. Surcharge is nothing but tax on tax. Tax on tax. So what is the surcharge? This is the surcharge, 10% of income tax where the total income exceeds 50 lakhs, but it is up to one crore. But if your total income exceeds one crore, then you have to pay a surcharge of 15%. If your total income is more than one crore and up to two crores. But in case if your total income exceeds two crores, then you have to pay a surcharge of 25% if your total income is between two to five crores. And the surcharge becomes 37% when your total income exceeds five crores. Now, in addition, in addition to surcharge, you should also pay health and education cess, which is at the rate of 4%. Now, this gets applicable only if you breach the limits of the total income, which is mentioned here. But as far as health and education cess is, uh, is concerned, it is applicable to everybody. Whatever it may be your income, you have to pay health and education cess. But surcharge, you should pay only if your income exceeds the threshold. Income tax department also provides relief in the form of rebate. Rebate is nothing but a kind of a discount which is given for you on the tax what you have to pay. So what is the rebate and who is eligible to get rebate? The answer is when the total income is less than 5 lakhs. I mean, it should not exceed 5 lakh. Up to 5 lakh is also fine. If your total income is up to 5 lakhs, then you're entitled for a rebate under section 87A. Now, what is the rebate amount? The rebate amount is maximum 12,500. Maximum rebate is 12,500. Actual tax payable or 12,500, whichever is 
less. And you should also note that the rebate is applied to the total tax before adding education says. Now, I, since I've done a brief uh, workout here, uh, let us calculate the tax for this itself. OK, let's do that exercise on this. Let's experiment that provision on this. OK, so this is the situation here. So my total income is 5 lakh. OK, let's uh, here it is 6 lakh. So let me add one more provision. I have also deposited, also deposited fixed deposit account for six years. The amount what I have deposited is one lakh. So this can also be claimed deduction under section ATC. Fixed amount deposited in fixed uh, amount deposited in FDs with a lock-in period of at least five years gets qualified for a deduction under section ATC. Now after applying these two deductions, these are my two deductions. After applying these two deductions, what has happened is my total income comes to five lakh. Now, am I eligible for rebate under Section 87A? The answer is yes, because my income is up to 5 lakhs. So I am eligible for under Section 87. So what is the rebate? The rebate is actual tax payable or max 12,500, whichever is less. First, so that means first I have to calculate what is the tax I have to pay. Right, first I have to calculate what is the tax I have to pay. Right, so let's calculate the tax. Let's calculate the tax. Now, while you're calculating the tax, uh, calculating tax is quite easy, but you should pay attention because sometimes it can be a little confusing also. So understand the concept which I'm trying to say. So in order to calculate tax, first you should know whether I am a non-senior citizen, whether the SSC is a senior citizen, which category does the SSC belong to? Because the income tax labs are based on age, right? So first you should know what is the age of the SSC. So let's write down the slab here. Then we'll write the amount in slab. So these are the columns which we need and this format of calculating tax is designed in such a way that you should be in a position to remember what you do. Assuming I am not a senior citizen, so I fall under this tax bracket which is mentioned here this one let me copy paste this so i fall under this tax bracket okay so what is the first slab the first slab says up to 250000 okay it's the first slab up to 250000 and if you this slab this particular slab is not uh, entitled for any tax because up to 250000 what is the amount in this slab tax rate is no, you don't have to pay any tax next what you have to do is you have to go to the next slab so what is the next slab 2,50,000 to 5 lakhs. Okay. So take this 2,50,000 to 5 lakhs. Now tell me in this slab, what is the amount? What is the amount mentioned in this slab? Now, how will I know what is the amount mentioned in this slab? It's quite simple. 
what is the difference between the two brackets here? Now this is the lower bracket, which is two lakh fifty thousand, and the upper bracket amount is five lakhs. What's the difference between these two? The answer is the difference between these two values is two lakh fifty thousand. Okay, so write down the amount in the slab as two lakh fifty thousand. So how do I how do how did I get this two lakh fifty thousand? As I mentioned, you have to figure out. You have to figure out the difference between these two values, the upper bracket, sorry, the lower bracket and the upper bracket. So when you find the difference, five lakh minus two lakh fifty thousand, this is the amount what you get, which is known as amount in the slab. Now the second slab is taxable at what rate? The answer is five percent. Fine. So do the calculation. Five percent into 2.5 lakhs or 2 lakh 50 thousand. So when you calculate 5 percent on 2 lakh 50 thousand, you get 1,000. You get 12,500. 12,500. Okay. Fine. Now what's my total income? My total income is 5 lakh. Has my total income exhausted? The answer is should I go to the third slab 5 to 10 lakhs? The answer is no, you don't have to go to the third slab. The reason being is simple. What's my total income? My total income is 5 lakh and 5 lakh is already over. Add these two, 2 lakh 50 thousand in the first slab, 2 lakh 50 thousand in the second slab and you will get my total income which is 2 lakh 50 thousand. Sorry, 5 lakhs. So 5 lakh is over already. Right, so I don't have to do any further application of slab because phi lakh is already over. OK, so next step is to calculate the tax which we have done here. We have calculated the tax. Tax is 12,500. Am I eligible for rebate? The answer is yes, I am eligible for a rebate. When you get rebate, when your total income is up to phi lakhs and my total income is up to phi lakhs, so I am entitled for a rebate. So what is the rebate? Rebate is actual tax payable or maximum 12,500 whichever is less. So what is my tax payable? My tax payable is 12,500. And what is the maximum? That is also 12,500. That means under section 87A, my rebate is 12,500. So that means my net tax liability will be have to pay any tax because my entire tax of 12,500 gets qualified for a rebate under section 87A, which is 12,500. So this is how you people should calculate the tax because some students think that, OK, how to apply this lab? They get confused. OK, if my income is 5 lakh, let's say the total taxable income is 5 lakh. They think, OK, 5 lakh falls here, so the rate of tax is 20%. No, that's not the way. The procedure is to put this five lakh rupees, put this five lakh rupees through all these through all the applicable slabs. So for us, the applicable slabs were only the first two. So we have put the first the income under the first two slabs. So first slab, the income was two lakh fifty thousand, and this is nil. And the second slab, the income is two lakh fifty thousand, and this is five percent. So you have to put the tax, sorry, put the total income what you have earned through all the applicable slabs and then find out the uh, tax amount, right? So any uh, any confusion, any question you want to ask at this point in time before we uh, proceed further, anything on ATC, ATCCC, ATCCD, 1A, 1B and tax calculation, any questions you have, anybody in the class? Are you sure you do not have any question? You have understood how to calculate tax?
Hmm. When I was a student, my teacher explained how to calculate tax. Unfortunately, I was not able to understand. And I'm surprised that many people have understood at the first attempt itself. That's great. So it's time to apply what you have learned. So I'll just share the first illustration which we will be working out now. Sir? Yes. So, what is the reason for giving five percent, imposing five percent tax for uh, two lakh fifty to five lakh uh, income people, and uh, claiming it under rebate, sir? The, the maximum whole... amount is twelve thousand five hundred. Correct. The logic behind giving rebate and to keep the tax rates progressive is based on the principle of Adam Smith. Principle of uh, uh, equity, what you have studied, principle of uh, in the canons of uh, Adam Smith, he says tax should be levied based on the income earning potential of citizens. Somebody who has very less income should not be burdened by imposing tax. Somebody has a decent income that guy should be charged a very minimal amount of tax. Somebody's income is very high, exorbitant. The tax rate should also be very high. So this is called progressive tax rates in which your tax rates are based on your income earning capacity. You earn a moderate income, then your tax should be less. You, our income is very poor, very low, then there should not be any tax. And again, the purpose of allowing rebate is simple because government wants to give some relief given the fact that the kind of inflation that exists in the country. If my income is imagined 5 lakh rupees, if I end up paying 12,500 rupees as tax, that's quite unfair considering I have so many expenses to meet, right? And in that all those expenses, another burden is that I have to pay 12,500 tax. So government wants to give some relief to the common man, some relief to the citizens by giving them the rebates. So that's the whole idea of giving the rebates. So instead of giving that rebate 12,500, uh, they can directly cancel that 5% tax for that people and directly impose 20% tax for the next in, next 5 to 10 lakh income. Rate. What if my income is uh, 5 lakh 50,000? Yeah, they, they will pay 20% tax. No, am I, am I, if my income is uh, uh, 5 lakh. Uh, 50,000. It's unfair that just because my income is 50,000 more, you pu you're putting me in uh, right the next. Uh, okay, you're saying this one. Yeah, that one. 
So you want this to be removed? Yeah, they are actually uh, removing no, sir, under section 2087A. Instead no. of giving 5% here. Yeah. Yeah, the, yes. the rebate, um, the re in this case, this SSC has enjoyed uh, maximum rebate maximum rebate of 5 lakhs, but in some cases the rebate might not be entire 12,500, it might be less. So the 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 point which you're saying is that because of this rebate, this entire slab becomes yeah. pointless. Yeah. That's the point you're trying to make, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So government of India has listened to your uh, suggestion and this year it's not there. <laughs> so this is being removed. Uh, you, since unfortunately you guys learn tax rates which is one year older but this is not there the rebate is now being eliminated okay so this concept is removed you're right it doesn't make sense yep. because if you're saying five percent the same five percent you're giving in terms of discount so the effect will be the same doesn't make a difference OK, so let's uh, look at this question. So here is the question. Now this SSC is an aeronautical engineer. He works for government of India. His taxable income during the previous year, 2019-20, amounted to. Uh, OK, 8,55,000. But in addition to this, this is his salary income. From salary he has earned uh, 8,55,000 and this is the taxable income from salary what he has earned. In addition to this, he has also earned uh, interest of 18,000 on bank fixed deposit and he has also earned interest on savings bank account. So both interest on bank fixed deposits and interest on savings bank account, both these incomes are taxable under the head other sources. Now these are his investments. This is where he has invested. First he has invested in equity linked social scheme, sorry, equity linked saving schemes. Then he has also invested uh, on his own in pension scheme offered by Life Insurance Corporation of India. Then he has also made voluntary contribution to national pension scheme and he has also paid life insurance premium for on his own life. Uh, for his brother also, he's only paying life insurance premium. For his elder son also, he's only paying life insurance premium. So these are the three premium amounts what he has paid. And you have to do th three things here. First, you have to calculate uh, the permissible deductions under Chapter 6A, what is the total income and what is the tax liability. So you're supposed to do three things and First one is to find out gross total income and also apply uh, deductions under various sections of Income Tax Act. So let's do it. So here the 
task for you guys is to remember which deduction can be claimed from which section of Income Tax Act. So that's extremely important. So first let's calculate the total income. So the total income for this guy is uh, from salary. The data is here. It is 8,55,000. Then from bank deposit, he has earned 18,000. So we are writing that under other sources. And from savings bank account also, he has earned 9,000. So these are his incomes earned during the previous year. To apply deductions. So, income tax, see our chapter is chapter 4. What we are studying is chapter 4 uh, deductions. But income tax also has a separate chapter for deductions uh, in the provisions of the Income Tax Act. And the chapter that deals with deductions is chapter 6A. Okay, so this is the income tax chapter. Don't get confused with our chapter. So, what are the deductions he can claim? that needs to be computed here. If you want, you can show this. You can write income from other sources and write A and B. Or if you want to write totally also, you can write. So both are <coughs> correct. Both can be done. So <coughs> show them under a particular head or directly write down the way it is given the question. The choice is left to you. Or if you want to show separately also, you can show. So if you want to show separately according to the uh, heads of income, let's do that also. Both are correct. You can follow both. So if you are doing it by showing it under different heads, then this is how it will be. So come on columns and So in this you have two. Uh, one is 18,000 or 9,000 savings bank account. Is 18,000. So add both. This will give you eight lakh eighty-two thousand. So this is one way of doing it, showing it separately. Or if you want to write direct, also this answer will still be the same. It all depends how you want to present the answer. So let's go to deductions now. The first deduction which he wants to claim is investment in ELSS, equity linked savings scheme mutual fund which gets qualified for deduction under section 80 c let's write that investment in ELSS mutual fund. 
60,000. What's the next deduction? <clears throat> the next deduction is contribution to LIC pension scheme. What, <clears throat> what we will do is we'll take it separately because ATC contribution to voluntary pension scheme offered by financial institution like LIC gets qualified under section and this gets qualified under section ATCD 1V. And what about life insurance? Life insurance is also ATC. So let's finish off uh, these deductions as per the sequence. So next is section 80. Life insurance premium. Life insurance premium. And whose premium is qualified? Self, spouse, and children. Yes, if the SSC has paid premium for somebody else also, it is not eligible for a deduction. Okay, so self is eligible. So we'll do calculation for self. Let's write down here. Self. Quantum of deduction. Quantum of deduction is actual premium or ten percent of ten sum assured. So, what is the sum assured here? Eight lakhs. As per the question, eight lakhs into ten percent. Or what is the premium he has paid for self? 15,000. 15,000. Whichever is less. So 8 lakh into 10% will give you 8,000. So when you compare 8,000 with 15,000, whichever is less you should take. So here it will come 8,000. Okay, so that's how it is. Next, child is also eligible. So you son. The same will you apply actual premium paid or 10% of sum assured, whichever is less. So the sum assured for son is also 8 lakhs, but the premium paid is less. So here what will come is 5,000. So we are done with ATC. Next, we will go to the other sections. The next section is AT Triple C, which is contribution to LIC pension scheme. So let's write contribution to LIC pension scheme, one lakh rupees. Now, what is the rule which needs to be followed? I just sir, mentioned it to sir. you. Yeah. 8 lakh to 10% is 80,000. 80,000 or 15,000, whichever is there. Okay, 80,000. It's not 8,000. And 5. Okay, now let's look at the rule. What I was discussing with you here. What's the maximum quantum of deduction allowed? As per section ATC, triple C. The data is here. Deduction un deduction from section ATC, AT triple C and ATC together should not exceed 1,50,000. So this rule needs to be applied here also. What we are doing, if you look at 
the amount you have to curtail this amount if you add 1 lakh 15000 1 lakh 20 1 lakh 80 is coming but as per the rule all three sections put together the maximum deduction cannot exceed 50000 even though the ssc has more than 1 lakh 50000 if you total 15 60 plus 15 plus 5 plus 1 lakh it comes to 1 lakh 80000 but as per the rule all these three sections combined together the permissible deduction cannot exceed 150000 so even though ssc has more amount to claim but we have to restrict this to 150000 we can't go beyond this now next point what else is left out okay contra voluntary contribution to nps and this gets qualified for deduction under section 80 ccd 1 b so CCD and B, the associate here. Maximum reduction allowed here is five fifty thousand, but the contribution what he has done towards NPS is seventy thousand. So again, there is an issue here. So we have to then apply the rule. Again, let me go back to the provision, which goes like this. So, deduction of 50,000 is the max under section 80 CCD 1. But he has contributed more, but even though he has contributed more, we have to restrict that amount. deduction limit so we will write here 50, so have we incorporated all the deductions one two three four yeah all the four are done so let's calculate the total income so we have applied deductions. We are calculating total income. So only one step will be left out, which is calculating the tax liability. Right. Taxable. So this is your total taxable income. The next step is to calculate the tax. Age of the SSC is given. The answer is age of the SSC is not given in the question. So in the absence of information, we will apply the normal slabs. Uh, so the normal slab is something which we just have noted down here. So we'll apply the same. So let's do the calculation of tax. So up to here it will go as usual. There will not be any change up to here. The income of the SSC is 662,000. We have just computed it. So we have to move on to the third slab because only 5 lakh is over. 
but the income is six lakh sixty two thousand. So the next lab is rupees uh, five lakhs to ten lakh. On which the tax rate is twenty percent. So the tax rate. So total income is five lakh. Up to five lakh is over. The total income is six lakh sixty-two thousand. So another, how much is left out? So one lakh sixty-two thousand. So when you add all this, two lakh fifty thousand plus two lakh fifty thousand plus one lakh sixty-two thousand in the third slab, you will get the total income of six lakh sixty-two thousand. Okay, now let's calculate the tax rate. One lakh total taxable income is six lakh eighty-two thousand. Okay, six lakh eighty-two. One second. So one lakh eighty thousand and like eighty two thousand into twenty percent. So you get thirty six thousand four. Is this SEC eligible for a rebate? The answer is no. A rebate under Section 87A not eligible because in order to qualify for the rebate, your income should not exceed five lakh. But his income, his total taxable income, is six lakh sixty thousand. So he is not eligible for the So, what is the tax amount? Add the tax amount here. So tax amount twelve thousand five hundred plus this you get forty so tax amount we have computed on this you have to add four percent health and education. To four percent, forty-eight nine. So you get 
9764 as per the rules you should round off this to nearest become 49760 but anyways even if you don't round off it's okay we'll not follow this point of examination so this is the yeah 4% of 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 4%
OK, this is the final answer. Any any doubt? Anybody has any question? Have you missed out on any point? Any part of the solution which you did not follow? Okay, so we'll wind up the session. We will need uh, next class as per the schedule. So you can leave the meeting.